Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome back Hi. to uh, our events. Welcome back to uh, people that we admire and that uh, have something to say. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank Proper, our partners and our uh, sponsors for staying with us. And uh, we really appreciate it in times like that. Uh, rules and uh, of engagement, of course, uh, everybody turn the microphones off. Uh, I, I would suggest to keep the camera on so we can see each other uh, as much as possible. But um, on the session of Q&A, to have it in the chat. And uh, I will uh, talk to Professor Yado for uh, questions. Um, so thank you for, uh, for uh, coming again. Um, I would like to point out um, uh, some aspects on uh, just a second on the next event. Uh, our next event is uh, going to be on uh, on Tuesday with uh, Sergio Mana, the CEO of uh, Becere. Also, what uh, what I would like to to say it's about our uh, application. Uh, please, as we launched this application uh, this month, uh, we want to have a clear communication to you guys and not to overload your mailbox. So um, I know we're still running in a few problems here and there, but we'll fix them. Uh, for people that did not download the app, please do so. It will be much easier further on to check in uh, our events and to to keep in touch. Uh, for the ones that have, please also check in to the events uh, once you attend. So we don't, uh, when, when we communicate stuff for the event, we don't want to send to everybody. We just want to send to the ones that are in, in event. So uh, our, our app is uh, up and running. For some of you that might, for, I, I don't know, they might misplace the email, uh, we either ask us, ask me, ask Sandra, ask uh, for the people in Cluj, ask Karina. Uh, we can help you. The, the email was sent on the 4th of this month. So if you look on your step-by-step uh, -step, uh, procedures of uh, downloading the app, you find it in your mailbox from the 4th of March, uh, from, from the 6th of March. March. Um, and, 6th of uh, April. April. Sorry, Sandra. Good, good point. 6th of April. Uh, but ask us and uh, we'll be right there helping. Uh, today, we have uh, the pleasure to have an all-star with us. He's been with us uh, sometimes and uh, every time uh, he had some of the most appreciated uh, events of all time. <coughs> and um, he is a professor of strategic management and leadership. Uh, he is a regular lecturer at Yese Business School. Um, he had sessions, he probably uh, conducted various uh, leadership uh, and strategy sessions to more than 16,000 executives, many countries, many nationalities. Uh, what I like also, of course, my sports side, it's a member and of the Strategy and Economic Commission of Fetche Barcelona. Uh, he has an extensive executive experience, uh, CEO of Group President uh, at Sarah Lee Bakery, uh, CEO of Bimbo Spain, VP of Marketing and Sales at uh, Bimbo, VP of New Business at PepsiCo, uh, Frito-Lay Spain, and so on. He was elected Spain's best executive in 2000 by the Spain's Business Association, uh, AED. Um, Professor Mikel Yado, thank you, Mikel, for being with us today. Uh, it's great seeing you again and uh, can't wait to, to listen to you. Good. Thank you very much, Virgil. So, um, well, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be connected. I mean, technology fascinates me. Every day, so I'm, uh, I'm listening myself now. I know we might have we might have some microphones on, so people please uh, might might forgot something, but no, it's just uh, it's okay now. Okay, so um, 
You know, we are going to have this six, 75 minutes presentation, to, well, uh, discussion today. Uh, my thinking is about devoting 40 minutes for joint uh, reflection. And during the, the presentation, I'm going to ask a couple of questions that I would like you to use the chat. And then, you know, I will ask Virgil after a few minutes to tell me which are the most uh, relevant answers and more common answers uh, from you just to comment on them. Then we'll have at the end around 30 minutes for a Q&A should you have any questions and we'll lead the questions for ch from chat as well. So you send the questions, you know, to, to uh, you put the question in the chat and Virgil will um, uh, help me to organize and screen the questions for me to answer them should you be interested. Um, if any question remains unanswered, you know, it will be a pleasure to me to 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 answer that. That's that's why you have here my contact uh, email and my LinkedIn uh, account, or you can contact me through CEO clubs. At the end of the, you know, the Q&A, I will take advantage to recommend you a book that um, reminds all of us that it's not easy to think long term and it requires an effort, you know, a real effort. We have a, we have an inclination, natural inclination to, sh to search for solutions, immediate solutions to problems that are troublesome to, to, to us. But, you know, we are more, we have a tendency to think more about today than about tomorrow. That's why today I will try to reinforce the, the idea that the, the building the future already today is very important for all of us. All right, let's uh, go for the presentation. By the way, you have uh, digital copies of all these slides, so um, don't worry about uh, if you, you miss some of the points. Um, let me go here. Okay. All right, first of all, uh, you know, I like to, uh, many times, I, I like to reinforce this concept. When I was in PepsiCo, I didn't meet him personally, but I, I read about John Schooley. John Schooley was the guy that was hired by Steve Jobs, and uh, they made a great team. They got some differences, but during a certain period of time, they built the company, Apple, that has been so successful so far. And um, uh, uh, he was using that concept. And for those that come from finance, you understand that this concept is return on equity. Uh, he was suggesting to, to switch the letter E not, uh, to, the, to the word experience. Making the point about return on experience is very important in our lives. His message was that it's not important the amount of experience that we have. The important thing is what we do with experience we have. So it's not important, if I may, uh, what's going on today. It's it, what's important is what we do, what what's happening to us today. So um, just for this session, I encourage you to to take these seventy five minutes as an experience itself. So I encourage you to do something with it. It's not just going to the movies in your case, and seeing the presentation from Mikel Yadoa, which is fine. It is my intention, it's my, my wish that you get something from it. So I would recommend you to write down things, messages, and try to do an effort to get things to call to action. Do something with that. It's not, you, if, if you don't do something with the things you're gonna be listening uh, today, it's like you've not been here. So. Try to force yourself. I know that we are in our houses for many of us or in our offices, and we have a lot of things to do, but you know, it's my recommendation that you get the most from this session and try to do something with it. Um, do, those that know me, you know that I like to share this thought with you because I think it's about thinking. When I, I finished my executive life uh, in PepsiCo and in Sara Lee and Bimbo, and I started delivering sessions at the ESA and other business schools, and uh, on where I have, when I have had had the opportunity to deliver sessions to your CEO clubs, you know, I, I feel, was feeling some kind of uneasy because I was thinking, how come I dare to talk to people that know more about their businesses that I do? Imagine banking industry, uh, aviation, uh, oil companies, mining companies. How much do I have to know? to entitle myself to talk in front of all uh, people because, you know, it's impossible that I get to know more about, uh, for instance, travel than Javier, you know, or, you know, about clubs like uh, Sotiris, you know, it's impossible. But 
when I when I found these uh, thoughts from Socrates, I felt very comfortable because it was not about teaching. It's about making people think. So this thought about I cannot teach anybody anything and I can only make them think made myself very comfortable. So, you know, uh, let's take advantage of these 75 minutes just to, to, to think and to reflect about all the concepts I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, from my perspective, we are in, on, under a storm. I mean, and the storm, the good news of storms that they, they, they pass, all right? So after a, f a certain period of time, they're they pass. Of course, this storm is kind of uncertain, it's complex, it's not defined in timeline. Different countries have different situations, what's going on in the United States, what's going on in Spain, in Italy, in Romania, you know, in the United Kingdom. It's impacting everybody, it's global, it's, you know, <laughs> at the same time. And it's a it's a it's a it's a, a storm of offer and demand regarding economy. So it's something that is happening. And my message, you know, it's that it will pass and we have to be ready to pass it. And at the same time, we have to be ready for the day after. So I would like now you to use a, use the chat while I'm I will keep you sending messages and writing the word. What word comes to your mind in the current situation? And then I will ask virtually in a couple of slides to tell me which are the most uh, common words they're using. But try to put in one word what you feel now. What what's what's what you feeling? What what's uh, what's the word that you would choose for that? All right. While you're writing, I'll continue with the presentation. I organized the presentation in these four in these four uh, chapters. What I call key drivers for a new world. And I meet the chronic of life for all of us to remember that we today we talk about leadership. We're going to be talking about immediacy. We're going to be talking about future and we're going to be talking about digital. So it's what I consider that are key drivers for a new world. Let's go with the L. Uh, regarding leadership, let me tell you, um, I've been reading and talking to many people and companies. I give advice and students uh, from all over the world about this situation. And let me tell you, I, I, I think that one important thing is leadership. Of course, we'll talk about some initiatives, how we organize ourselves, which things we have to think uh, first about, you know, what about workforce and what about strategic thinking and so forth. But let me tell you, it's about leadership to start with. That's why I picked the word leader to start with. Um, and when thinking about leadership, I like to put the, the, the word mindset. It's a matter of mindset. You know, it's a matter of, uh, you know, how you confront that. What do you think? You know, you have, you have more positive thinking or more negative thinking. You have more uh, thinking of possibilities or thinking of limitations. And let me tell you, you know, it's, it's optional. It's our decision. It's nobody. Nobody will impose our thinking to uh, you know the the way we have to think. So when I see this kind of mindset in the positive possibility possibility side, on the positive side of solutions seeking solution side, you know I see a difference in the results. And we've seen all of us for sure. Um, you know, different results in the past, even though we didn't, we were not living a crisis like we are living today, but we all have had crisis in the past. We lost customers, we got some failure in some products, and we had to overcome the situation. So the words, I picked eight words here, courage, resilience, calm, adaptability, flexibility, creativity, decision making. Before going to the stress management thing, you know, I, I think they, uh, these are Seven, eight characteristics are very important to have to overcome this situation. I picked the picture of New York here. You see the image of Liberty Tower. The Liberty Tower is a tower that was built, you know, where the air, where where the twin twin towers were built uh, were built uh, before destruction. And I, I had the opportunity to live in New York, uh, you know, for a couple of years. And let me tell you, I've seen this mindset in that city. And I think it's the mindset we have to have. And we all know that New York is having a tough time now. That's why I also like to remember that city that gave us so many, you know, uh, happy moments and for sure they will get back to normal. But certainly this spirit of, you know, uh, of reinventing yourself, 
of rebuilding, you know, the building where a disaster where took place, I think is the kind of character we need for the future to come. Regarding last point on this page, uh, regarding the stress management, I think that managing under the circumstances of stress is very important. And it's very important for company leaders because if we are not able to overcome the stress and organize our thoughts and be calm and lead our people to the right place, probably we are not the leaders we should be leading that organization. And during this time as well, you'll have the opportunity to read the kind of leaders you have in your organizations. So it's a great assessment time. Because if I may, you know, leading a company with everything goes fine. It's relatively easy with all the challenges we all have. But now in turbulent times is where you're going to be seeing the true leaders. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that. But let me make a point about the stress management. You know the guy on the right and the left side of the picture, but the guy on the, 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 right, the guy that's on the right side of the picture is Alessandro Campagna. I was with him in Bologna, you know, not even one year ago. And I remember we were sharing the stage in one of the in one conference over there. And one of the questions, and by the way, Alessandro Campagna, he's the coach of the water polo team of Italy that he made to the World Cup in you know last year. Uh, on the last World Cup, and he is a gold medal, uh, Olympic medalist uh, in Barcelona when he was a player. And people was asking, uh, was asking him, hey, Alessandro, could you tell us how, you know, one of the characteristics that make you pick the players that are going to be part of your team? And we say, well, in Italy, many, we have many good players, but if I had to pick one of the characteristics that, that I picked for the people to be in the team, are the guys that are able to play under stress. Because if you have a very good player at the, in the, during the first half of the game, it's relatively easy. You have capabilities, abilities, you pass the ball, you score, you know, you're a team member. When everything is it's relaxed, you have plenty of time. But we don't, when you don't have that much time and during the last three minutes of the game, you are there with the ball and you have to you know, uh, throw the ball or pass it to somebody else. And do you have the stress of you, you, if you make it, you get the World Cup. And if you don't make it, you don't get the World Cup. You really see the great players there. So I pick those players that I understand that under stress, they're going to be performing at a very high level. I think that in these circumstances, we have to think about how good we are at living under stress circumstances. And what I was saying about the opportunity to assess our teams is to read which ones are really high performers under stress circumstances. Because if you find these people, give them you know, all the opportunities to grow in your organization because these are the guys and the girls to make a difference in the future. So just an example you know, that you know, links sports and management. I think it's a great, great point about being very good at stress management. All right, I went and I did some research and certainly we have a virtual situation uh, as we're doing now with the cameras. And I was, uh, I, I was looking about virtual leadership. And one of the things is that these are moments for true or of true leadership. And, you know, true leaders will make a difference. Sometimes we're leaders, sometimes we're followers, you know, and, 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 and because now of the distance, you know, we have to do very good at managing that. So let's see what, there are many theories and many concepts about this. And I picked a couple just for us to have a clear understanding of what scientific say, which are the, gonna be one or several of the key characteristic of dimensions that will make a difference in terms of leading. Let me go for the first one. The first one is that there is a theory about transactional leaders. You can go to internet and read as much as you want about this concept. The concept in, in a few words, to make the long story short, is that it's transactional. Is that I, why, why I picked the picture of this bar, this uh, cafeteria, you get some product, you pay, you give the credit card, you pay money, you get something. There are leaders that lead like this. You pay a salary, you get a return. You don't pay a salary, you don't get a return. And um, that scientific say that, you know, trans transactional leaders are not as efficient or as effective as 
transformational leaders. And the more I've read about it, they're talking about transformational leaders really being even more important when the tough time comes, like now, in virtuality, when you don't have the face-to-face -face, face -face relationship that we used to have, or we are not having that face-to-face -face relationship with the same dimension. The good thing for me is that you know, and now I'm going to be sharing you some characteristics with uh, of the transformational leader is that it's good news. It looks like humanity, people that are able to be close to people, people that are able to listen to people, people that care for people, you know, are going to make a difference. So it's not time based on scientifics for transactional leaders, but it's time for transformational leaders. They say that it's, they, they get better results and uh, and more so in this virtuality reality that we're living. Let me share with you four dimensions of transformational leaders that I would like you to think about them to see how much or how good that you are at these dimensions of this transformational leadership. And more so think about the people you have in your team because the more transformational leaders you have, the better off you're going to be for the future based on the scientific analysis that I've been able to go through. How are these transformational leaders? Well, the, one of the things that they, these leaders are charismatic. Charismatic, you know, meaning that they provoke the emotion, you know, and loyalty. People are loyal to them because these leaders are able to build up a compromise around values and they reinforce the 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 collective the 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 relevance of the 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 mission as a collective as a collectivity not individually all right so of course we all know that there are charismatic leaders that probably they have it more natural people that you know they are naturally charismatic but certainly we can do better at living our values walking the talk uh, making, you know, the vision, the mission clear for the company. Uh, by the way, you realize that the person is charismatic when you go into a room and you see that person over there, you say, I want to stay in that room because something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. So I want to stay there. Or if somebody, a charismatic leader or person, you know, by the way, leader could be anybody in the organization, could be the person at the reception, could be the, per the CEO, could be the sales guy, could be, you know, you know, it, it doesn't go with the stars, uh, you know, of the position. So you feel that when somebody, when a charismatic leader gets into the room, you want to stay in that room. You know, you get the feeling that something is going to happen. It's going to be good. It's going to be, you know, nice. It's going to be, you know, very, very probably decisions are going to be, you know, consistent. You know, that walk the talk I was talking about. So charismatic is one of the dimensions. And as I said, it's for you to think how, between one and 10 are you in this charismatic thing and you know about your organization. The second one is, you know, those leaders are inspirational. They inspire through uh, emotions and feelings, you know, they, they are able to transfer, you know, an enthusiastic vision of the future. They are um, they're being realistic, you know, they have their own, the, the, the confidence in, in achieving you know, objectives, you know, not, 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 not doesn't matter their circumstances. You may have good times, bad times, but come on. First, you have to inspire yourself. And second, you have to be able to inspire others. That's why those others have picked us to be the leaders. So they expect, you know, you, they expect us to be leading the organization towards a better future. So these guys are inspirational. And you may find them anywhere, and as I said, in everywhere in the in the in the company. The third dimension for the transformational leadership. This those leaders are intellectually stimulating. I love these two words. And I never thought that these, you know, or hardly thought that this was going to be one of the abilities, but certainly when I read about them, you know, I want to share them with you. You know, they, they um, challenge people, they uh, ask questions, they make people think. They don't just tell people what to do. If you tell people what to do after five years, they're going to be totally useless. If you have an organization or we know of organization that people just do what they are told to do, think now about them being in the distance. 
you will not have the opportunity to keep telling all of them what to do in the distance. I mean, if you have not built that, you know, stimulation by themselves and going there, you know, it's a challenge. By the way, it's different putting pressure that challenging people. For instance, let me put you an example. Putting pressure, if I may, Sotiris, if uh, on July 31st results are not better, um, we, you and me are going to be having a different conversation. That's putting pressure. What Sotiris would do then immediately would call uh, his family or call a headhunter saying, ah, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, 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 I don't get the trust from Miguel, and so probably I have to go somewhere else. But if I tell Sotiris, Sotiris, if by on July 31st um, we don't get better results, the company or the organization is going to be in a in a difficult situation. What can I do for you? What do you need from me? Do you have any ideas? Can we share thoughts? Can then Sotiris with that kind of you know offering, he doesn't have time to talk to a head counter. He doesn't time, have time to talk to his family because he's part of the solution. He's not feeling, he's not going to be feeling himself that he's part of the problem. So, and when you are part of the solution, you want to be part, you want to be in that project. So I like very much this stimulating, uh, intellectually stimulating thing. The third one, let's go for the fourth one. Individually considered. Two beautiful words put together. You know, these lead, those leaders recognize the needs and abilities of each member of the team. It's not the same for everybody. They treat people like individuals. They develop them like individuals. They, they are able to read the potential that they have. Some may go to the moon, some may go to another planet, some may stay here. So, but it's very important to have this individual consideration based on scientific, you know, analysis from these, uh, these professors going to understand that. So let's go for, to see if you can be better at charisma, you can be better at inspirational, intellectual stimulating, and, you know, concentrate your people individually. I picked that picture that I like very much the concept is that, you know, I tried to summarize based on my, based on my experience. And I was saying, you know, how can I, I can make the link to, to, the, to the real world in that sense? And I found, the, and I thought about this sentence about making them feel you. I mean, if they, can, if they cannot see you because they are in their houses or in their places, or uh, I don't know how dramatic or how, um, Extreme is the situation in, in Romania, but certainly in Spain, and here in Spain, we already have been 40 days working from home. So if people don't feel you, if people don't feel that you are there for them, or they are there for you, or you are not paying attention to them more in a way that they feel that you are paying attention about what they are doing, I mean, we are going to be losing something. Um, when I was traveling so much, when I was with PepsiCo and Bimbo going once a, year, once a month to the United States, I remember some days, some trips took one week or more. And I remember I was talking to my parents and I was telling them, you know, I'm sorry that mom, because I've not been able to see you and come to see you. And, you know, I feel like bad that I've been there. And they were telling me, Miguel, don't worry, don't worry. We, we don't see you, but we feel you. And these, these thought, these answers gave me a lot of strength during those times. And now in the situation that we are not able to see our people, you know, that thought came to my mind and I wanted to share that with you. If, if people feel you, that's very powerful, very powerful. So, you know, uh, make everything you can to, to people, to your people to feel you, not, don't call them to control them. Uh, just to control them. Of course, you have to ask questions, but pay attention to what they need, how they feel. You know, our houses are getting smaller and smaller, no matter how big they are, how small they are. So leaders are the ones to make that house bigger, that space bigger, give you room. Come on, think, make you think about the the the, the future is gonna be you know uh, bigger than it is today. And I'm referring to the whole stakeholders, our people. Our, our bosses, our boards, our customers, our suppliers. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to a group of professionals that were saying, well, you know what, Miguel, we have to take good care of suppliers because if they close, 
I mean, certainly we'll have to start again. So I'm taking good care of them. I pay attention to what's going on, what's going on with them. They are part of my system, no matter if they are not in my, pay, in my payroll. My value chain, my, my supply chain depends on them as well. So I'm, I'm taking good care of them and, you know, made me think, you know, a lot about it. And then I put these, those batteries here in, you know, I was putting about, uh, you know, uh, the mess that we are battery chargers. So if we're not able to, when we call our people that to leave them with more battery or more uh, energy that they had before talking to them, let's not talk to them. We are not doing our job. I mean, we are there to make these guys to have more energy. So we cannot let them with less energy. We have to be able to enthuse them. I mean, hey, by the way, for a salary, people, we work. But for a project, we give blood, tears, and sweat. Okay, so it's very important that we are able to transmit that. Let me take that minute. And Virgil, from the first question about the words that people were having in their mind during these times, could you share with me some of the words that people were saying? Yeah, the the, the most common, I mean, more uh, uh, written were uncertainty and change. These were the the most used words. Not not too much, but on one side, we also had anxiety. We also had lack of control. Uh, but I liked a lot uh, the prevail, uh, retooling, reinvent experience, excitement, you know, adaptation, um, a lot of change. I don't know, change in, in, in environment or change ourselves, but there was a lot of uh, people saying uh, the word change and Thank uncertainty. You. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, uh, Virgil. I will build uh, some uh, answers uh, on the go, but regarding uncertainty and change that we are facing, remember, we are We've been learning about change many times, but we didn't believe it. Many, or we were comfortable with status quo because, I mean, we are, you know, we have our positions, we have our salaries, with all the circumstances that the time to change a house, the roof of the house, is when it's not raining. Because when it's raining, maybe we are late. So one of the things that I would recommend is learn from these days, from this experience. Probably we did things good in the past that are allowing to have a better situation now, or maybe we didn't do things in the past that are not allowing us to have a, a good situation nowadays. So the most important thing is to learn about it. It's, it it's, I, I like very much the thought from Warren Buffett that he says, the worst thing from a crisis is not to learn from it. So one thing we cannot afford is to learn from it, to reflect about what thing we could have done better and what things we, we, we have to do better. And not just to focus on the past, but focus on the future. And certainly the uncertainty thing, it's part, I mean, let me tell you, it's part of our, the business world. I don't know, you know, as managers, as leaders, as uh, business people, I mean, we're facing problems constantly, you know, and we have we have to be ready. We, it's not we are not here to avoid problems. We are here to manage problems. And now, you know, this thing happened. And I like to think about we've been, you know, until now, like training. We've been, you know, uh, warming up. And now we are in the, in the final. We are in a great game. We are in the finals. We have to make that game. And now we, it's time for us to prove that all what we learned, what we studied, what we discussed, all our experiences are for to win this game. So it's very important that we use all the things we learned in the past to make them good use of them. And yeah, we've heard all these years about VUCA, the volatility, you know, uncertainty, complexity, and you know, and ambiguity that we're going to be facing in the future. The point is that this. This came too fast, you know, it's like 10 years happened in two, in two weeks. But yeah, I agree with you. We are in an uncertain problem, so situation and, you know, this anxiety, this loss of control. But uh, uh, guys, if I may, it's, it's up to us. So it's our, our mindset, you know, the way we face the situation, the problem, you know, and the obstacle, it's, it's going to make a difference. Mm, having said that, let me share with you some thoughts for to, to make, uh, you know, to try to help you with this uh, situation. 
let's go for immediacy, okay? We have life, immediacy, and the second concept of this. You know, uh, reading, we have the benefit of having companies like uh, McKinsey and Boston and all these guys, and let's take, let's take advantage of these companies. You have, you can have access to internet, you know, to any of these kind, what they are, they, what are they saying, you know, almost daily or weekly. And what I like very much, and I summarize that for you, I, I found these, um, these uh, immediacy recommendations from McKinsey, and I think there are five points that I like very much. First is thinking about the workforce. You need, you need to understand about the health of your people, how are they doing, where they're going to be working from. If you can, you know, retain them, you have to send something, you know, to do some salary changes or whatever, but understand, you know, workforce, you know, everything related to them. The second one, the supply chain. I was talking about suppliers. You have to understand, you know, how it's our, your origin doing and your final doing things, which things we have to stop doing, which things we have to keep doing. You know, it's part of the system. Customers, you have to understand if you are servicing customers from the restaurant business, at least in Spain, I mean, they're completely closed. So these restaurants, you know, are not getting people there. Or if you have customers that are in the food industry, these guys are open and they have a lot of, you know, sales. So you have to be able to supply them with products they need. The fourth one is understand the financial stress. It's very important to very good to understand the financial situation. You cannot have wishful thinking. I mean, we are responsible to understand where we are, to read the environment, and then make the tough decisions. And we have to understand that. If you have a healthy cash situation, you're going to be able to uh, stay longer in the, in the game. But certainly we have cash, you know, uh, constraints. Certainly we're going to have difficulties and then we'll need to some extra financing for the banks. You know, that's that's very important regarding startups. Those startups that were close, they closed their rounds before the, the coronavirus thing. They are in good shape because they have several months of relaxing time. They are doing their, their work and fantastic. But those startups that they were not able to close, you know, the rounds, the financial rounds before the, the corona, now they are facing a situation. So you have to make your own decisions. You have to say, I, I, I heard about, you know, uh, hibernation of, of, uh, of some businesses, depending on the sectors and depending on, on the situation. But it's very important you have a realistic understanding of which is the financial situation they're facing. And I like very much the fifth point, it's about the nerve operating, operating nerve. And I like the word nerve because it means tension. It means, come on, I'm there to do my best, to, to, to think about it. And come on, it's up to me. I can listen to everybody, can hear everything, but then I have to make my own decisions because it's you that are in Bucharest, in that corner, in that sector, with those customers, with those numbers, and nobody else but you have, you know, the, re the, 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 the real, an the good answers, if I may. Okay, you may call it operating nerve, commission, crisis commission, committee, whatever you want to call it. But I think these five points have helped me with many companies I deal with. I think it's time to support, care, and cooperate. You have, you, we have to do that. And to be able to give support, we have to care ourselves and to cooperate. I think it's not that just time for, for companies. It's time for sectors. So it's uh, for industries. It's not, just, it's not time just for you know, individuals, it's, 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 a, it's time for communities. I think it's not uh, one winning, it's the whole system winning, right? So I think Simon Sinek, I like, uh, I write, I like it very much. He's saying it's not time for countries, it's time for humanity. And you, you've seen these days, I mean, countries disputing about, you know, material and so forth. And, you know, it's a, a little sad, if I may. Come on, it was time, it is time for humanity and thinking about the whole, you know, the world and trying to cope with this all together, not regions by regions, but, you know, that's, that's the, politi the politics uh, uh, that are, that we are, we don't, we don't have at least me so much influence on. So, but I can influence my business, I can influence my community, and I have to do, see what I can do for them. Here, I would like to ask you, you know, uh, already through the chat, and I'll do the same with Virgil in a few slides, the biggest challenge for the future that you have, which is the biggest challenge? If you can do it in one word or a couple of words will be very useful. So use your, your, your thinking now and write down, you know, which, which is the huge challenge that you are facing, as you said before, with regarding the, 
you know, the uncertainty and how you're feeling. I mean, let's let's use the chat and I'll continue. And I'll get back to Virgin in a few minutes. Well, the day after, I mean, the day after the will come. OK, so let me let me share an experience with you. I on October 11, 2001, I was flying to New York City because the headquarters of my company were based in St. Louis and New York was the connection to go to St. Louis in Missouri. October 11, 2001, one month after the collapse of the Twin Towers. I remember uh, in the plane that probably a plane that was 300 seats over there, we were just flying 50 people there. I remember that we were paying attention who was getting in, into the plane just because we were all, uh, you know, scared about terrorism, about all the things that would ha happen. And I went to New York City and you know that when you go to New York at that time, <laughs> New York police were not the most friendly ones. I remember I, I got into customs and the police there, the policemen over there told me, thanks for coming back. And these days, this thought came to my mind again. And let me tell you, at that time, New York was thinking that was they were going to be facing a terrible situation and maybe many people wouldn't like to go back to New York. We all have gone back to New York. And I remember it was a tremendous time. So I see the light, I expect and I hope that the light, and I'm sure because of my experience over there, that this, this will pass. So the good times will pass. The point is that how to cope with this immediacy that, you know, will pass. So my message when people here in Barcelona, you know, come for tourists that, you know, that tourists is very important in, in this city, you know, I hope that people, everybody is kind enough to thank people for coming back because we people are part of the city. It's not the monuments. It's not just the food. It's not just the weather. It's not that it's a restaurant. It's ourselves. So, you know, let's be kind to the people when, you know, they're, they come back to our cities, Bucharest, Barcelona, or you name it. Let's go for the F, oh, the, for the future. Let's see, we talk about leadership, which is very important, immediacy, some actions to be taken immediately, and for the future. I like very much the thought from this guy, Larry Page, founder of Google. He says, the main thing that has caused companies to fail is my view is that they miss the future. We, we cannot wait for the future to come to start thinking about the future. We have to think about the future now. So I understand that we are firefighting, we're coping with short-term things, but I, as I said at the beginning, that's our nat natural tendency. I encourage all of you to get a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, once a week at least, couple of hours, write it down, see what's going to happen. You know, how do you foresee that future to be? Which things are going to be different? Which things are going to be the same? You know, which are, things are going to be trends and which things are going to be fats? you know, that when this is over, will disappear. And with that, you know, it's very important that we devote time to that. Nobody will do that, that work for us, okay? What some people will do for us is reflect and show and share with us their thoughts, and, but then based on our reality, see which thoughts of this are gonna be useful for, to help us to, to, to write this future that we need to write. Couple of uh, you know ideas regarding you know that one is the pestle uh, theory. The pestle theory that's been written just to, for us to remember. It's an easy word to remember. It's thinking about the politics, the economy, social, technology, environment, legal. How is it going to be? How is it today? How is it going to be in the future? Technology. What you know? What what which which things technology will bring to us? You know what about the legal part? You know how many you know. Uh, conflicts will appear because people are facing a, a you know a tough situation. Economy, how many people will get into unemployment? So, and for our people, you have to we ha will have to remember that before trying to get people engaged and motivated for our project. I mean, Maslow, the Maslow pyramid, to remind people, remind us that the basics have to be covered before getting people engaged. I mean, the salary, the house, the food, and all the basics that we have to pay attention to that because if we try to motivate people and people are not being fairly paid because we cannot, you know, uh, we have to solve that first, okay? So try to make your own 
analysis about politics in one page. Okay, anything will change, and then we'll see how we can adapt and how flexible to, we are to that. This is, you know, uh, a report from Euromonitor Euro International talking about the trends in 2019. So this was before the coronavirus. And they're talking about 10 trends. And I just highlighted for them, you know, we were already talking about digitally together. We wanted to be remotely, you know, connected. You know, imagine this was a trend and this is a reality nowadays. So certainly we have to be better at digitally, you know, being digital. Finding homo, my homo, it means joy of missing out. It means staying home. People love, with loving staying home. Now we're staying home because we have to be, to stay home. So this is, it was a trend, but you know, it happened, you know, immediately. I want it now. The delivery companies like Globo, like Delivero, like Just Eat, all these companies are very useful for people that cannot get out, you know, to get, you know, the, the food or to get the price. So imagine, you know, how important it is. And loner dinner, living, you know, it's it, now we are living, maybe not lonely. We have the benefit of having families, but these are trends. It's for you to think which of these trends will continue happening and which trends will not be there. This is a report from Boston Consulting Group, group it happened in March 16th, so almost one month ago. And he, they were asking this survey, you'll see on the left side, plan to spend more, a survey to, with consumers, and plan to, stay, to spend less. But these are reports that you have to reflect for yourself. So as you can see on the left side, those that, that are in the organic foods, preventing health care, household care products, vitamin savings, they are on the goods part based on this survey, okay? On the right side, certainly luxury, travel, outwear, restaurants, gambling are gonna be a challenge. So, you know, the leadership part that was telling you about on, you know, needed to reinvent things or the retooling that you were talking about, you know, more important on the on the right side. But certainly, you know, it's, it's possible, you know, and, you know, and we have to understand what we can do and what we, can, what we cannot do with our business. That's why I picked that, uh, that summary of this Harvard Business Review from these two professors, Reeves and Daimler, that they are saying that adaptability being the new competitive advantage. Sometimes we think too much of our companies that we are powerful because of the buildings that we have, the brands that we have, you know, the assets that we have. Yes, certainly. But we have to, to think that our, one of our competitive advantages is our ability to adapt. And more than ever now. Right. So and my and my thing is that we are companies and we are different companies are different than businesses. A company may have different businesses. If some business will have no future or a more, more troublesome future, that company have to adapt and use all the brains and talent that we have in the company to reinvent other places to go and do business. So the ability to see what thing will last and what thing will not last, this is our role. So I like very much this uh, sentence at the bottom saying, learning how to do new things is very important. And taking advantage of the change management that or change that you were talking about, Cotter is a professor of the United States. He's recommending to accelerate change to move from hierarchy to working as coalitions and networking. So sometimes companies or many companies will work like hierarchies and he recommends to do that kind of networking. And more so now that people are working from home and we are not face to face so much. So, you know, for you to think about the organization, how you organize the change, this is a recommendation that comes from Qatar. And let's go for the digital part. Let me tell you, digital is becoming more and more important. And suddenly companies that were not ready for digital, now they surprisingly, you know, they're behind. Look at this survey. It was made to 473 CEOs in 2019. And I just highlighted the 32%, meaning that just one third of these 473 CEOs we're saying in the top three priorities that IT was the top right then. I bet that now this is a top priority because either we're digital or we might be out. Out. So think about these as CEOs that many of you are. And I highlighted the innovation. Look at this, just 
we're saying innovation to be an important part of their, I mean, either we are creative now, and we are able to use, using your words to be tool, or using the word reinvent, or we might be out of the, you know, as a sector of a company of the game in the future. So I think that these two things, IT related and innovation, have to be part of the future. As an example, let me put you this example when I'm talking about this. I was thinking, oh, wow, what example I can bring to the to the table? And it's Estonia. Estonia is a country that was, you know, under the Soviet Union influence until 1991, and it's a north country in, in North Europe. You know, 1.5 million inhabitants, and these guys have decided to become the new digital nation. So everything is digital over there. So they call themselves Estonia. You can go to the website. My message here is that. It's not about resources. It's not about having a lot of money. These guys, they don't have, you know, like Norway, you know, oil, you know, plants. I mean, they don't have, they have talent. They have talent. And they, I mean, and, and they have talent that, you know, until 91, they were based on the common education. And as of 91, they're a new country. They're making a difference. I think that we should have some kind of this Estonia mindset to understand that the future is digital and we cannot wait no longer not to be technologically, you know, really good and master the technology part of our life. Everything is going to be, many things are going to be digital, automation, and here I wrote just seven concepts that came to my mind, e-commerce. E leadership, e management, e learning, e coaching, e negotiations, e health. See how many things are going to happen. We cannot miss that future because we feel like we are not there for the digital. It's a mess. Having said that, and before going to Q and A, uh, Virgil, could you share with me which are the main challenges that people were writing about? Yes, um, I saw reinventing uh, mm -hmm. two times. Uh, a few times was new reality. Okay. Um, also, uh, to understand and adapt to the new reality, but keeping and remembering the the lessons learned. Okay. It's another okay. challenge. Uh, gaining experience, improving, adapting. Uh, I, I again uncertainty, not so much. Good. But. Uh, but reinventing was, uh, and the new new reality was uh, dominant. Good. While you are sending, you know, writing down uh, questions for Virgil to pass to me, you know, I'm going to be talking about the points that you're saying as new challenges. Uh, certainly. Uh, what, so, what I propose, uh, Miguel, it's to, to un-share uh, uh, the screen so everybody can see you. Okay. Good, you know, and in the meantime, well, uh, they're writing, I'm not inviting you to talk because you are so many people and uh, we will not be able to answer everything. Remember, if some answer, if question remains unanswered, you know, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a pleasure for me to answer them later with. As I said, I think that if I, sh if I should pick one word from all the whole presentation here, you can ask to go to models and frameworks to help you with the strategy. And of course, you have many people in your organization helping with that. Mindset is very important. Mindset is very important. And it's very important that you have in your organization people with the right mindset. It's not the same leading a company when everything goes smooth. It's not, it's, it's not the same. One of the things you have to do is to think if people that you have in your organization are the right ones to, to lead your organization in these troubles sometimes. If you, to, you have people thinking more about limitations and they're more negative, they're not giving energy to the others, probably these guys are not good for these times in the company. For, and let me, let me make you think about yourself. Are you this kind? Do you have this kind of mindset? Do you have the willingness to overcome all this situation, to think about new possibilities, the new businesses that are there for many people to take it? Or we are more anchored in the past and complaining about, wow, the future is going to be tough. Of course, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy for most. But certainly there you will see in 10 years time people that flourish and companies that will not. 
and will be not based, based on the resources in themselves. It's going to be based on the talent. That's why the idea of the Estonia that I was thinking about. Taking advantage of the learning. You know, get sometimes what we're learning and take your notebook and your learnings and for, for from that to grow, you know, it's that we grow because we learn, because we reflect about things that we could have done better on that we are doing good. You know, if I may, I recommend you to go to the videos that uh, Andrew Como, the mayor of New York, is doing every day at this time. I think it's four o'clock uh, New York time. And he shares with the world for 20 minutes what's going on in New York. Let me tell you, he's, he's using the word reinvent New York City. He's talking about that mindset. He's talking about, you know, uh, it's not time for complex politics, uh, you know, this building with Donald Trump or other leaders are talking about Connecticut or New Jersey. They are getting together, the governments are trying to be one team because we they need to be united. So I recommend you to do that. And, you know, I think it's a great, uh, you know, he's a great leader for what I see, you know, in difficult circumstances that what we need now. Go ahead. What questions we have, uh, Virgil? Hello? Maybe you have the mic mute? Yeah, uh, first first of all, uh, you didn't unshare the Q&A, but that doesn't matter. Um, we, have a, we have a question. Um, being a member of boards in startups such as Cabo, what are the lessons, strategic insights that you can share from startup world during this period that big companies can learn? Well, um, uh, let's think about the startups. You know, these guys are already used to have suffering every day because you, they never know what about the future is going to be look like in two or three months. They are fighting or struggling to get some funding. You know, this character, I think it's very useful. And this character, if I may, many big companies, we don't have it because we have resources, we have some status quo, we have more stability than resilience. And in this circumstance, I think that resilience is more important than stability. Those companies that go for stability, if the, the environment doesn't help you to go with the stability, we're going to be having different, more difficult times. So having people that have this resilience is what we can learn from the startups. And the second one is that, if I may, startups are companies on spirits that want to write the future. They don't just want to read the future. They don't want to do more of the same. They don't want to do things that many other companies, they don't come into a market to compete with other people. They want to create something. The word competition for them, if I may, doesn't exist. I mean, it's not all competing and gaining market share. They have the spirit of creating a new world, a new environment, something that didn't exist. I think that if we put that creativity part in our in in our thinking in our mindset, we we are gonna we're gonna be better off. Regarding regarding the startups, I was saying that those that have the round close, that's they're gonna have a good time. Those that don't, probably have to wait until the the times get better. Uh, we have another one. What are the valid principles that you think will apply also into the new reality? The principles, I think that will remain the same. You know, I think that one thing, yeah, one thing uh, uh, that we have to think is that things will come faster than in the past. You know, things are going very fast. In the past, business and process were linear, linear. But now it's exponential. In the terms that when something happens for good, we might have a huge success because exponential. But when something happens for bad, mm, bad news because it goes faster than before. So I think that's that's a new reality. But let me tell you, it applies everything. The leadership thing that I was talking about, we always will have immediacy. We always have to think about the future, the new future that we'll be facing in the future. We cannot wait for that to arrive. And certainly digital. We have to be very, look at this, how many businesses are collapsed today because they were not digital enough. You know, courts, you know, lawyers, 
you know, notaries. Yes, they had to go to the notary to sign a document for the bank. Why did I have to go there if we have we are supposed to stay home? Because the notary, come on, we have to become digital and think about all the technical uh, technicality and the technology opportunities that we have for our business. So, and let's recognize that we are behind. Most of them, most of us are behind. Look at supermarkets. They were not supporting the online system because they wanted people to go to their stores. Okay, now people will not be able to go to their stores. Or maybe here in Spain, they are not able to go as many times they used to go. And now they are behind with the online. If I may, shame on them. Shame of them because they had the opportunity. They had the, the red flag from Amazon and all these companies saying online is coming, online is coming. And they were against that. And no, no, I want my consumers to, go, to come to my stores because the experience, come on, the experience can be as good as it was, as it is in online, as it was in offline. But come on, let's think about our businesses and see how we're doing with that. You know, I've seen restaurants here in Barcelona that they don't have the restaurant open, but they have opened the kitchen and they're using Lobo and they're having more sales now that just filling out the 40 tables that they had in the restaurant because now they have thousands of tables at their uh, availability for them in the in the Barcelona thanks to the new technologies that uh, companies like Lobo are bringing, uh, bringing on board. But if the restaurant doesn't have the name of the customers or they didn't care about the address or didn't care about them, you know, we're missing that. Yes? I don't hear you. Sorry for that. I'm trying to keep it off because I, I know it's some echo in, uh, in the microphone thing. Uh, you think this economic crisis in this year, 2020, will be tougher than the 2008-2009 and why or not? Why? Um, this is my opinion, but it's my humble opinion, not because I am in front of you, I have the truth. But my opinion, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. It's global at the same time. So I think that it makes our, should make us more united, more thinking about being a human, you know, group that countries. Uh, I think that uh, at that time we thought that it was something that was going on with the uh, United States and their own uh, politics uh, in the world. Uh, I think it's different. Tougher, you know, I think it's it came faster in our case because it's affecting everybody. But the way to solve it, I think, is exactly the same values and principles that made countries to overcome the ones in 2007 to 2008. Of course, if it was a financial crisis. Remember that we we're scared about the amount of unemployment. It was very tough. It took five years to recover. And many didn't recover and many, many did recover. That's why I think that one of the values that we have to do is this mindset and thinking, okay, let me read this, this situation. Let me understand that. And let's, let's see what I can do with that. And as I said, you know, now it's a game. Now it's something that we need to prove ourselves that we, what we learned in the past is going to be useful for now. Because let me go to, because as Virgil said, you know, with the Pubal Club Barcelona, if you train, you win all the games, but you don't make the final, you don't win the final. Come on. You have to be, you get messy doing the scoring in that game. I mean, scoring in normal games, that's, that's good. But scoring the final, that's the most important thing. So now it's time for us to prove that what we learned in the past is going to be useful for us to be very, very good high performers. You talk about leadership and different types of, of leaders, and uh, that's that's actually a process between leaders and followers. How that change in the process? I mean, is is just going to be a hierarchical uh, relationship of leadership? Um, my my humble opinion again. Um, I think that hierarchies have no future. I think that uh, networks is part of the future. At a certain time, okay, at center was. Sometimes we are leaders, sometimes we are followers. For instance, if I was the CEO of a company, sometimes I'm following the people that are leading projects. I am the CEO. I have maybe more stars, but at that time I'm a follower. And then they follow me. 
So it's not a hierarchy that it stains and remains the same all the time. And I think this is the flexibility we need. Why I think that hierarchies, you know, have not that much future as networks? Because hierarchies make us a slow, make us a slow. If I go from the bottom, I have to ask my boss, and my boss has to ask my his boss or her boss, and then the boss, and then hey, the boss makes a decision, pass the decision here, here. This is too slow for the market. You know, things go very fast. I like very much when you listen to the videos from Como, he says that change is fast and people are slow. And I agree with that. So we have people who have to learn to be faster. And I think one of the answers is our attitude, but at the same time, the way, the way we organize. Uh, one more question. Um, other than investment, uh, cautiousness and uh, cutting cost what do you think large company will act like in the next 12 months what do you, what do you mean act like what do you mean what what's going to be the the, the be, besides the obvious probably like fire department of cutting cost and uh, uh, being cautious yeah what would be something common for the for the big companies I think that because they have the resources, I foresee big companies being able to move into the new businesses. If they are in some businesses that don't, don't work, I mean, they move to other businesses and acquire other businesses or think about alliances. This is one thing that I foresee happening. Consolidation will happen because if the, the revenues go low, you know, you need to consolidate. I see consolidation of banking industry. I see consolidation of in, in insurance companies. I, I see consolidation of uh, many, many companies because uh, car companies maybe, because you know, you, you need to get a critical mass and then, but certainly they have to read the market and see if there's future there. And if not, we'll adapt. They should adapt and they should be flexible to go for the business that will sur survive in the future. And one thing that I like very much before the coronavirus, I, the first time I read about the chief digital officer was from Starbucks, from the, the, the Schultz organization that he picked or he placed the chief digital officer. Just a few months before or weeks from the, of the coronavirus, I read very, I, I like very much to read a, a company that was having a chief algorithm officer, meaning that you have data and somebody to know what to do with this data, because the data is not valuable itself. It's just to forecast things, foresee behaviors, foresee tendencies. So, and I, I love when I saw this chief algorithm officer. So I, if I was part of a big company, I would go with a position like this, to be very close to the CEO, you know, very closely because data and understanding what's going on and using the technology in your favor will help you to find solutions for your business. Thank you, Mikel. Uh, we, th these were the questions. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you for your energy and inspiration. Uh, please give us uh, a three minutes wrap up. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, do you see my image now? Uh, no. Ah, uh, yeah, we see you. We see you. No, but you see the slides? No, I tried to share. Let me let me see if I'm lucky enough. Do you see the slides now? Not yet. Not yet. Well, I'll do my best and see if not, I'll uh, I'll talk about it. Okay. See now? No. No. Not yet. Okay. Well, one of the messages that I wanted to send you guys is that. Uh, I have a picture here that you're not seeing, but it's uh, the Carturesti bookstore at Lipscani and Strada in Bucharest. That you you've been in that uh, bookstore, and uh, it's beautiful design, architecture, and I'm already thinking of the places I will go when all this quarantine thing finishes. So, and this one this is one of the places I want to go. I want to go to the Carturesti bookstore because it's a beautiful place. Of course, I love, you know, that I, I love Bucharest and it's going to be one of the first planes I'm going to take as soon as I'm able to. And one of the reasons why I'm including that picture or that uh, image I tried you to have to send the image of this picture to you is that because there I found the way, the, a book that I read and I recommend to you. 
That's the book from Simon Sinek called The Infinite Game. All right, The Infinite Game. And it's a book that helps us to understand that games in the future are not finite, are infinite. We have plenty of opportunities. We have plenty of possibilities. We have a universe of uh, many things to be done. And this is a great book to reinforce and inspire our mindset to become, you know, a big thinker and, and think about all the opportunities that we have. For sure, we are part of a business that somebody developed or founded many years ago. Let's try to play the role of that founder today with the new circumstances, be able to read the environment and make our own decisions. So I recommend you to go for this book. And the last slide that you don't see is I, I put here, go live. Go live meaning, come on, go with this leadership thing immediacy thing, future thing, and digital thing. And at the end of the day, it's living. You know, we cannot stop living until everything is ready. Come on, is our life, I don't know if it's gonna last weeks, months, or, you know, or what's gonna happen in the future, but we, it's not waiting here to live until we are, we have a better environment. It's our world, we have to make decisions. So go live and try to apply as many of these dynamics I was suggesting you regarding leadership, leading, and immediacy, taking the actions in the short term, think already about the future and go digital because the future is uh, is how I, I think it's going to be. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Miguel. Uh, thank you all of you for, uh, for coming. Uh, I want to remind you about uh, our app. Uh, check in events, please give us some feedback. We need your feedback as we uh, need to keep doing the extraordinary things. Uh, turn the cameras on, let, let us see you, say, say something, say hello, say goodbye. Uh, we miss you, we do miss you and uh, we can't wait for that the moment that we can actually, uh, you know, have a drink together and uh, have this end of the meeting where we would say okay let's let's mingle some so uh thank you again miguel for uh, being with us thank you all of you and uh see you next week bye bye thank you bye thank you bye, bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.